guys, it's Little Ash coming at you today in uh, Raid Shadow Legends with another champion guide. Welcome to the video. Welcome to the channel, guys. Uh, these videos probably get, you know, uh, 1 20th, 1 30th the views of my uh, other channels, but I really like this core group that we have here. You guys keep the champion requests coming, and I keep the content coming to you guys. And uh, yeah, I like touching base with you talking about different champions inside the game, and it's really become one of my, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, kind of a passion project on the side here on this channel. So thank you so much for the support, as always here. Uh, we have some shout-outs. We have AF Bear. It's going to be a big day for AF Bear because he's been coming at me a lot. Uh, happy Easter, you can see. Since Easter, he's been requesting a Whirlam Frost King guide. Uh, we got E Daddy looking for a... Would like to make a request for two of my first legendaries, Nethril and Whirlam Frost King. AF Bear again coming in. AF Bear again. Uh, who's he asking for? Whirlam Frost King, Soulbound Boyer, Skullord Vargal, and Lord Chan. For so we've done Soul Bond, we've done Whirlum now today. We still need to do Skull Lord and Lord Champfort. Maybe we'll do Lord Champfort later on this week, uh, or maybe early next week. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, guys, let's go ahead and jump into it here. Make myself a little bit bigger. There we go. Feel more comfortable here now that I got some room to operate. Uh, so Whirlum Frost King, as I mentioned, or did I mention the very first, uh, the end reward for the very first battle pass inside Raid Shadow Legends, the first and only the battle pass that brought us Frozen Banshee, that brought us the Bears, Urson and uh, Ice Crusher and the other one, uh, the Ice Crushers, and then uh, Urson Ironhide is the other one, and then Whirlum Frost King was the legendary, the Void Legendary final reward. Now, as I mentioned, he got a big buff, which is great. Let's take a look at his kit. Does he still have what it takes to actually recommend upgrading all the way to six stars? If not, you know, where and when should we be using this champion? So, Whirlum Frost King, he's a defense legendary Void Void affinity, which, you know, we love and we we hate, right? When we see Void Legendary, they ought to be really, really good. So does this guy deliver? First of all, aesthetically, I would argue he delivers. He's always been kind of cool looking to me. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but he does seem like a little out of place in the Knight's Revenant faction. You know, like everybody else in Knight Revenant is kind of like creepy, undead, cult aesthetic, right? For the most part. I mean, everybody's just a cult member, basically. Uh, whereas, you know, look at these champions, right? Whereas we look at Whirlum Frost King and he looks, I don't know. I don't know what he would be. What faction would you put this guy in if it wasn't going to be Knight Revenant? I guess that's the, the real issue, right? So anyway, on the A1, Winds of Winter. Attacks one enemy, right? 50% chance of placing a freeze. Plays a Perfect Veil in the alloy with the lowest HP for two turns if the freeze is placed. That's great. Uh, perfect Veil, of course, is 15% damage mitigation from AoE attacks. Moreover, they can't be targeted. So it's a great ability, great addition to his A1. Uh, Plays a Veil on the ally with the lowest HP for one turn if the freeze debuff is blocked. Or resisted, okay? So, really solid A1 with that additional support vis-a-vis -vis the Veil and the Perfect Veil. On the A2, Frost Bite Blast. On a three-turn cooldown, attacks all enemies. I should note one thing on the A1, by the way. If the 50% does not proc on the freeze, like, let's just say it's a 50-50 to land the freeze. If you just don't get the freeze proc at all, it will not place the Veil, right? It has to be blocked or resisted for that to happen. Which does come into play with the A2. Frostbite Blast, an AoE attack with a decreased crit damage, decreased accuracy on all enemies for two turns. They buff this. They cannot be resisted, okay? Very good ability. Moreover, we're placing increased crit damage on all allies for two turns. So increased crit damage, certainly way more valuable than decreased crit damage. So he's got that. The fact that the debuffs cannot be resisted, kind of whatever on the decreased crit damage is nice to have, but it's not a game changer. Uh, but the decreased accuracy, they can't be resisted makes him immediately viable for Bommel teams, right? This dude, the area that he shines the most is progression anywhere uh, or Doom Tower. Doom Tower waves, Doom Tower random floors, Doom Tower bosses, right? And that is because, uh, sure, the decreased accuracy that can't be resisted, namely against Bommel, is very good. Uh, this, because he doesn't need accuracy for this, for these debuffs, and the fact that even if it's blocked or resisted on the A1 really means that you don't, you don't, you know... You don't have to build him with a lot of accuracy because even if the freeze is resisted, you're still going to at least veil an ally, right? Uh, on the A3, though, Ice Grave Armor is the highlight of his kit despite a pretty serviceable and unique A2. Ice Grave Armor gives the big version of strength and the big version of increased defense on all allies for two turns on a three-turn cooldown. Uh, just one of the better support abilities in the game. 
Big version of Strengthen is the strongest, uh, along with big version of Ally Protect. They work obviously a little bit differently, and the Strengthen is just mitigated damage flat out, whereas the Ally Protect is one champion is going to be taking all that raw damage. Uh, but arguably, Strengthen is one of the two strongest damage mitigating buffs inside the entire game, and he's got it on a three turn cooldown. Add to that increased defense. So it's a very good ability. Uh, for a defense based champion, he can actually put out some damage too because he's got an AoE attack, uh, increased defense in his own kit, and good multipliers on his A1 and his A2. Moreover, he has one of the best defense Doom Tower battle auras in the game. I want to say it might be the best. So 40% extra defense in Doom Tower battles. That is very good. So overall, what do we think about this dude before we even, you know, talk about gear or anything like that? Overall, man, like, I think he is a pretty freaking good champion in a vacuum, you know? Would I be excited pulling this dude? Absolutely not. Because he's still more of a progression champion, right? He's a champion that you run into that roadblock with your poison team, with your seer team, or whatever team you're using. You can slot him in there on Doom Tower waves, and he's just like regular floors, I should say, in progression. And he's just going to be a monster support champion, okay? It, I don't have him in this build today, but if you're in that situation, right? If you're just struggling in Doom Tower hard or something like that, and you get a Whirlum Frost King... I think one of the best things to do is not even bother building him for a lot of damage or anything like that, but actually putting him with a little bit more HP and just throwing him in a bolster set as well to get even more survivability and viability for your team. Now, that is a very progression-specific recommendation, so keep that in mind. He does have a 4 multiplier on the A1 and a 4 multiplier on the A2. That's the AoE attack on a 3-turn cooldown. That's actually pretty good. Now, his base defense is not sky high. They give him a 3.5 on HellHades.com in the arena. I would tend to agree with that. Maybe I'd even go a little lower in the arena. Although, I will say that A2... It's pretty cool, right, to set up a nuker with the increased crit damage and then decrease accuracy on the enemy team cannot be resisted. You know, not too bad. Maybe a three and a half is, is, is viable. Dreadhorn, he gets a five for reasons we already spoke about. I can't show you Dreadhorn because we're not on that rotation right now. But, I mean, you guys get the point, right? Just throwing down that, that the decreased accuracy that cannot be resisted. Uh, Nether Spider, uh, Frost Spider, Scarab King, he's getting pretty good, like above average scores in everywhere in Doom Tower for the reasons that we already spoke about, with the exception of Dark Fae. I would argue you can even use him in Dark Fae. Uh, he doesn't have any turn meter control or anything that we really love to see, like a really strong CC kit. Uh, he does have the freeze on the A1, but that's not going to help you out tremendously in Dark Fae. Uh, but again, for survivability, right? As an aura lead, as just somebody who's going to keep your team alive, you could do a lot worse. Hard mode dungeons, to me, again, I would put him a three you know in in fire knight dragon ice school right i would give him a three so quite a bit higher uh reason being again is that beautiful a3 ability if you don't have a champion like let's say we don't have to move far first off the grim is very comparable in a lot of ways he's got to increase defense and an ally protect on a three turn cooldown right so he's not bringing the strength in but he is bringing that ally protect he also has an aoe on a three turn cooldown again they're they're somewhat comparable champions the shame is one of them is a void legendary again falls a little bit short in my opinion of being a void legendary just needs a little bit more in my opinion to his kit to be actually super excited about um, Unless you're just, you know, craving that progression type champion. Let me go ahead and show you how I built him uh, for today's spotlight here. So, Mr. Whirlim uh, Frost King. We're going to do the masteries together here, guys. What I did was I threw him in crit rate on the gauntlets. I want some damage from him, but I'm not going to min-max his crit damage on the gauntlets and build him to be like a traditional nuker. To me, that's missing... You know, the highlight of this champion, what he can bring to the table, which is survivability uh, with a big exclamation mark afterwards, right? So 237, I'm prioritizing some HP defense speed, right? You do want a little bit of accuracy to land that freeze on the A1, but as we already spoke about, if you don't land it, it's not going to be the end of the world. So I would say fairly easy to build this champion. I would go defense on the banner. Uh, instead of accuracy. I would go with defense or crit damage on the amulet. Uh, I went HP on the ring. You can see I got a nice, beautiful trip defense roll there. So 31% defense, not too bad. You know, guys, we will go ahead and throw a crit damage here on the... I don't think I need to be super picky on what I throw on him. Let's just throw one with some accuracy on it as well. Boost up his accuracy a little bit more. Trip roll there. But I think I will go crit damage because if you're going to go crit rate, you might as well go a little crit damage unless he's dying. Now you can see I have a, verbi a proverbial smorgasbord of, of sets on this dude, right? 
I've got a speed. I've got one stone skin gives 8% HP. I got one protection gives 20 resistance. And then I've got perception for accuracy and speed. So we're really highlighting a bunch of different, you know, viable gear sets for this champion. If we consult hellhades.com, they recommend, uh, buh, 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 buh. they recommend lifesteal, speed, accuracy, perception, and resist uh, in terms of artifact sets. So I guess because he has that decreased accuracy, you could build him in a super, super high resist uh, build as well, which would be pretty cool. Keep him alive to use his A2 to keep the accuracy down and to support your team with his A3 ability. Uh, anyway, we went uh, defense percentage on the chest. Uh, the only way I would go HP again is if I put him in a bolster set. Uh, speed on the boots. So there we have it. I mean, I think it should be pretty obvious, but each of these sets brings something of utility. Uh, just because he's a support champion, defense-based support champion, doesn't mean that we want to ignore speed. So I think throwing a speed set on him is absolutely fine. Uh, another gear set would, that would be beautiful on him is Righteous gear. If you have, of course, Righteous bolster, hard to get that gear. I totally realize that, but I'm just saying for uh, late game as you progress, if you have it, if you're relying on this champion, uh, most importantly, you could use it. But that should be set aside Righteous gear in my opinion, for some of the best champions on your account. Let's go crit rate. Let's go a little bit more crit damage. Let's just go down the left-hand side here. This is super basic in terms of, of course, I could go defense and end with unshakable or something like that, but I'm going to build him for all-around PvE uh, content here. I'm going to pick up all the... Uh, all the obvious stuff here. He does have his debuffs that I definitely want Master Hexer on. I am going to use Lore of Steel because I have so many basic sets. Uh, I'm going to pick up Arcane Celerity. You could also pick up Rapid Response, you know. Uh, he just has one more debuff than buff. So, actually, he has the Veils on the A1. So, you could go either way there, right? Uh, I'm going to pick up Exalt and Death. And I might as well pick up Kill Streak, even though he probably won't be killing a ton. But here we go. These are our final masteries on Whirlum Frost King. Not a bad build. Not a bad champion. I tend to be a little bit to be. I want to point out my uh, my biases as I have them. Uh, I would probably go intimidating presence, by the way, on blessings on this champion, guys. Uh, I think he's a perfect kind of aura. He has that great aura anyway that you're going to be utilizing in Doom Tower. So might as well double down on it, right? So intimidating presence would be the way to go. Uh, other, all, otherwise, you could go lightning cage as well on this champion. So those are two viable options. Uh, let's go ahead and of course we want him in the lead. 40% Doom Tower battles, threw in some other randos, some somewhat accessible champions. We have Nut, Newt, we have Tyrell as our debuffer here. We have Wurlam as an all-around helper, carry. And then we have Hatatsu, who we probably don't need on this squad. Obviously, no revive. Actually, we do have a revive. We have Sil the Drakes. I'm sorry, Sil. Uh, so a really robust team here. This is a Doom Tower hard secret room defense champions only. Uh, but really, I'm showing you him here because A, there's no bomble to show you him against, unfortunately, on this rotation. And B, I mean, this dude is just really uh look at that. Look at that, right? Decreased crit damage, decreased accuracy. It, it can't be resisted, right? It's Again, not a game changer per se, but that decreased accuracy that can't be resisted on a three-turn cooldown is very valuable if you don't already have it on your team, okay? Uh, so we should be able to bleed through these waves fairly quickly, and I'm going to be curious to see what he puts out in terms of damage. Obviously, there's no way in hell he's going to out-damage Newt, uh, but we'll see what he can put out here with 100% crit rate in now that we switched that crit damage onto that amulet, right? So uh, overall, again, as I was saying... I'm a little bit higher than I think your average Joe on this champion. That being said, I do think he's just like one cool passive short of justifying being a Void Legendary, you know? Give me a little something else on him. He's certainly not a bad champion. I don't agree with anybody who says he's bad because he's just such a great support champion. Uh, and maybe you could argue that that's all you need, right? A as a, to justify being a Void Legendary, just not be awful, right? And I think that he definitely serves that bill, uh, but there's no doubt about it. In full transparency, there's a lot of players who are quite down on Whirlum Frost King. I am not one of them. However, I acknowledge he's definitely not one of the better Void Legendaries out there in the game, but he does serve uh, definite utility and viability for a lot of players out there who need a good support champion, one of the better ones in all of Doom Tower. So he puts out 256,000 damage, which puts him in the same territory as a Tayrell and a Hatatsu and a Sil, really. So like, 
you know, not bad in terms of a hybrid damage and a lot of support that doesn't show up necessarily on the stat sheet. So there it is, guys. That's Whirlim Frost King. Thank you so much for watching. Keep those champion guide recommendations coming. And as always, take care, guys.